If you're a developer, don't sleep on N8N. It can be actually a really interesting addition to your set of skills. So in a previous video, we did a complete tutorial on N8N and we created this workflow here, right? So in N8N, we create we create so-called workflows by connecting these nodes. Now, why is this interesting for you as a developer? Well, well, N8N has an MCP server now, so you can connect Cloud Code or Codex or GitHub Copilot to your N8N workflows here so that they are aware of this workflow. And one particular use case that I think is really interesting is to build out a custom UI for your workflow. So you can build out your backend features here, and then once it's time to create a beautiful UI for it, you just connect Cloud Code or your AI agent and you say, hey, look up my workflow and build a beautiful UI. And if you're already working in the terminal anyway, you want to stay inside the terminal, but you quickly want to get some info about the workflows, it's very easily, you just connect the MCP server and it can retrieve your workflows. I've been playing around with it. It actually works really well. So let me show you how it works. So very quick recap here. This workflow kicks off when there is an incoming request, a webhook. It will then retrieve weather data from the open weather service, right? So this is a built-in node in N8N. I only have to specify the API key, right? So if I double click, we have settings here. Right, so here I can set up credentials. I've gone through all of that in a previous video. Once we have the weather, we pass it along to an AI agent, which will create a poem about the weather data, which then gets sent to my email inbox. And ultimately we respond to the request that kicked off this workflow. So we've built out this workflow you need to do a couple things. So this workflow needs to be eligible to be used in the, for the MCP server. So it needs to be active. This means it needs to be uh, published, right? So basically uh, production. So make sure it's active. And then also it needs to contain one of the following trigger nodes. So in this case, I'm using the webhook node. Basically we can send an API call to N8N to trigger this workflow, right? It needs to be a post request, right? We can actually see it here. It needs to be a post request and We've set it up in a previous video. And then also what you need to do is if we go to settings for this workflow, we need to make it available in MCP as well. So you can do it from here or you can go to this overview here and you can say enable MCP access, right? So you, you will see this uh, icon here. If you go to settings and then you go to MCP access, you will see the workflows that are available for the MCP server. All right, so once that's ready, we can connect our agent. So I will show you how to do it for Cloud Code, uh, GitHub Copilot as well. So for Cloud Code, they describe it here, but the way I got it to work was to simply create a .mcp.json file here in the root of my application, right? Because I want to use this to generate a beautiful UI. So this is my brand new Next.js app. It's just it's just a starter template. And then here it shows how to connect. So there can be an OAuth flow, and we'll, we'll see this in a second. We can also go to access token here, and then here they specify or use the following code in your mcp.json file. So if we copy that and just paste this in here, I got it to work with this. Now we do need a access token here. So if we go back and just regenerate one, make sure you don't show it to other people, replace this piece with that. Now, if I have this in the root of my app, now if I restart Claude, it will it should pick up on that and it's gonna ask us to use this MCP server. So I will say yes. Okay, so then I can ask which N8N tools do you have access to? So let's see. All right, it has access to three tools. So search workflows, execute a workflow, and get workflow details. So now let's say we have an app, npm run dev, but it's just the standard boilerplate for now. I wanna have a UI that is suitable for this workflow, right? So then users can submit uh, the, the city for which we want the weather off. So if we tell Claude, can you create a beautiful, a beautiful UI for the weather workflow in N8N? So let's see what Claude can do with that. Okay, so it wants to use the search workflow. So I will just allow that. All right, so it found one and now it wants to get the details. So I'll allow it as well. All right, so after a few minutes, it is finished. Let's check it out. All right, here we go. It has generated a UI for my workflow. I did zero work on this UI. I completely handed it off. So now if I try something like Paris, generate weather poem, we actually, get a result here. So everything here fits this workflow perfectly. 
and I think it makes building full stack apps even easier. Here on the end at end side, we can also see all executions. So we can see that this, this was the one that I just, that just everything looks green here. And if I check my email, I actually have an email with the poem. Right, so check out my previous video if, if you want to see what we're doing exactly in the workflow. But the point is everything here is working. Right, so if we check out the code that it has generated, it's using the webhook URL. So it was able to get all of this information from the workflows. So then from our application, we can just make a fetch call to the webhook URL. Right, this is what we're getting from the webhook node. It will give you a production URL once you activate the workflow. And we can just use that in our app to trigger that workflow. Now it has created a form with just one input here. So it also knew to s that this workflow needs an input, right? So here we're going to get weather data for a particular city. So the agent knew that we had to create a UI where the user can submit a city. But what if we change it here? So let's say we're going to do it based on zip code. And so now we expect there to be in the body data we expect there to be some zip code. So now if I if I save here, my code here in the app is not updated yet, right? Because we're still submitting the city here. So now I can just ask class code here, can you update the UI? Not even specifying exactly what I changed. All right, you can see it found the change. The workflow now uses zip code instead of city name. Let me update the UI. All right, so here we can see a div pass by that looks good. All right, and now when I come back, I can see indeed it's now asking for a zip code. So it's suggesting some, let's say this one, if I click on that, it actually still works and I still got an email as well. So now we can build out workflows, parts of our backend, maybe not everything, because sometimes we prefer code, although they do have a code node here as well. And then we can generate a beautiful UI with our AI agent. So I used cloud code here, but it should work for other agents as well. So they have instructions here for the codec CLI. Now, actually I was not able to make this work, unfortunately, but what about GitHub Copilot? So GitHub Copilot here in the chat has tools. If you click on that, you get this uh, dropdown here. And then here there's an option for add an, adding an MCP server. So here, if we try HTTP, we can specify the URL of the MCP server. So here under OAuth, we have a server URL. So if I paste that, we have some ID. I will just press enter. I just want it for this workspace. And now it wants to do an OAuth setup. So I can open that up. And here it asks me, it's actually visuals to your code that, that, I'm, that wants to get access. So if I do that, and now if I go back, I can see that the server is running here, but let's actually ask GitHub Copilot here to verify. All right, here we go. So it has access to three N8N workflow tools, which are indeed the ones that we saw before as well. So this is how we can connect N8N to Visual Studio Code with the OAuth flow. And actually I was also able to make it work with the access token itself. In that case, it would look something similar like this, but um, if you actually ask your agent how to set it up, it will help you out as well. So I'm pretty sure there's a way to make it work with Codex CLI. It's just that I haven't found a solution yet. Now, of course we can self-host N8N. I have other videos on that and how to set it up both locally as well as on a VPS. And this should also work with self-hosting. Now, if you're gonna self-host, make sure to check out Hosting or Yes, they are also today's sponsor. But the reason to go with them is they already have an N8N VPS template out of the box. And actually they have three different templates. So a bare bones setup, and then the second one is with 100 plus workflows out of the box, right? So you have these workflow templates. And the third option you have is actually in queue mode. This is a more powerful mode, especially if you're doing, especially if you're doing a high volume, they have a template for that out of the box as well. Make sure to check out the link in the description to get started. All right, so here they have the N8M pricing page here. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see the current plans that they offer. So if you already anticipate that you will need a more powerful setup, feel free to go with one of these plans here. However, I've had a good experience with this particular plan. So I will go with this one. All right, on the cart page, make sure to use my coupon code, which is all uppercase ByteGrad to get an even better price. So that is all uppercase ByteGrad. I really appreciate it if you use it. And then we can pick the period, a daily auto backup, the server location. And then here we have the templates, right? So if you search for N8N, you'll see those three templates. I will go with the bare bones setup, but they have these other ones as well. All right, so let's continue. All right, after payment, you can pick a password, additional features, and then it's gonna provision the VPS. All right, after a few minutes, it's good to go. 
Here I'm in the VPS settings, but if you click on manage app, you will see the N8N dashboard here. Again, make sure you're the first one because this is gonna be the owner account. All right, so then here we are in here. We can start building out our workflows again. Of course, we don't have to start from scratch because you can just copy everything and just paste that in here, right? Because each workflow is just JSON actually. So if you download the file, you can see your whole workflow here in JSON format. Right, so now you can see I'm running this on Hostingers and actually Hostinger is doing this with their new Docker manager, actually really powerful deploying Docker-based applications. We've used it for a self-hosted Next.js app as well. And you can manage that here. It will actually show you the Docker Compose settings here, the, the YAML editor here. So you can see, for example, using traffic here, and they're also showing you the environment variables here to start N8N, so like the time zone. They describe very well how to update N8N as well. So if there's a new version, very easy or change the domain name. And if you did forget that user password, you can reset that as well because they have this terminal built in as well. So you just run like two or three commands. So a great place to self-host N8N. In any case, hope you have a better idea now of what is possible with N8N. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.